Well, hi, you booktube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Um, I wanted to bring you this morning a book chat on a book that I read a couple of weeks ago, um, and it was called Paradise on Fire by Jewel Parker Rhodes. And uh, this was this is a like a middle grade YA type book, probably lower. I, I would say probably sixth, seventh grade, maybe. Um, older kids could read it and get something out of it, but uh, that's probably the age group that it's aimed at. But um, Paradise on Fire is a, uh, and as you can see, beautiful, beautiful cover. Um, this is a book that just came out last year. It's a, a new release. Um, it was 2021. Like I said, it's from Little Brown and Company out of New York. And uh, again, Jewel Parker Rhodes is the author and Serena Malian is the illustrator. Um, this was a excellent, excellent read. I was actually uh, given this uh, as a gift from the Howard Zen Education Group um, for doing some, uh, like I, I had done a they had a re uh, let me talk here. They had a um, teacher's lesson plan for teaching reconstruction, and uh, I had tried that a few years back. And they had given me a free book at the time, Eric Foner's A Short History of Reconstruction. And then, um, as they got several teachers around the nation to do this lesson, they put up a, a report on how reconstruction is not being taught enough in schools and all that kind of stuff. And so um, I was chosen for my comments that I left about uh, the lesson. They put that on the website and I was uh, they, the blurb and the final report. And so anyway, as a thank you for doing all that, they also sent me this Paradise on Fire. Now, uh, the Howard Zinn program all is all about teaching um you know not your typical perspectives he likes to you know his famous book a people's history of the united states it's from the from the people's point of view and he also likes to hit uh some of the some of the issues in the united states history that doesn't typically get hit so um you know like reconstruction like we said civil rights um environmental issues you know stuff like that and so uh this book is it's got some major themes running through it and one of them is an environmental theme as i will uh get into so um our main characters in this book are abby she is from New York. She is, uh, and, and all of these are like middle school age kids, um, middle school to high school age kids. And she is a little bit artistic. She's got a background that um, it, it's a little bit, uh, you, you really feel bad for the character. She was in a house fire and she loses both of her parents and her parents in, in the process of being lost in the fire, actually save her life and, and get her out a window of the house. And um, so anyway, throughout the story, we get this, this uh, as, as the character gets built, this fear of fire and this fear of being trapped. And this, this is going to play big in the story. And so um, Abby uh, goes to live with her grandma, Bibi, and... Uh, her grandma wants her to find healing because she's still struggling with the loss of her parents as any young kid would. And uh, so she puts her on this trip with um, Wilderness Adventures and she's gonna go to, she's gonna get on a plane. Again, she's from New York. She's gonna get on a plane, fly across the nation to, and uh, go out to, I, I believe it was California. And uh, they're gonna go out into the forest, into this Wilderness Adventures and gonna go to the Paradise Ranch. And they're gonna spend a couple weeks uh, basically out in nature doing doing hikes and stuff like that. And uh, she is going to be joined by a whole cast of characters. We've got Jay, who is from Brooklyn, New York. we got Vanessa from New Jersey. Deshaun, Kelvin, and Aaliyah are all from Philadelphia. Um, I don't think I missed anybody. There Maybe there was one I missed, but uh, these are all young people who are from the inner city and they don't typically get a chance to go out in nature. And so uh, this is going to be their chance to go on a wilderness retreat, basically. Um, the Wilderness Adventures, the Paradise Ranch, is owned by Leo. Uh, he's the owner and director. Um, we find that his dog, Ryder, plays a role in the book. He becomes uh, kind of a, a friend and partner with, with Abby in the book. And then there's Jamie and Dylan, who are uh, counselors at the camp. And um, 
I, I really enjoyed this book. Basically, uh, you get you get a real feel for uh, kids and their back and forth dialogue between each other. That's that's kind of comedic uh, as you go through the book. Uh, a little bit of trash talking, not to the extreme, but you know, just in a friendly manner, and that's always kind of fun to listen to. I see I see it and hear it in the in the classroom every day and so it, it was kind of funny it made me chuckle but um, basically they get to this camp uh, most of them haven't even flown on a plane before and so that's an adventure in itself but uh, they land and they get out to the out in the wilderness and we find very quickly that um, they are definitely out of their comfort zone which really is the whole point of the program and so um, you go through this and right off the get-go Addie finds herself um, as a lover of nature. She immediately bonds with, with Ryder the dog, with Leo the, the counselor, or, or excuse me, the owner of the camp. He acts as a counselor too. And uh, she, she starts out on some of these hikes before any of the other members of the group do. And, and she gets out into the mountains and she's overlooking the, the mountains and the forest and she can see the vast beauty of it. Now, as the story goes, we find that um, Addie is a uh, an artist. She has a sketchbook, and she's always drawing maps. And uh, her maps are always about escape. And uh, this all goes back to her childhood tragedy when she lost her parents in the fire. You know, if they would have had an escape plan. So everywhere she goes, she immediately draws a map and finds the escape routes to get out. Even on the plane, she's got the exits all marked out. And how will she get off the plane so that she, you know, survives? And um, as she's at this camp, she immediately starts to see, you know, the beauty of nature, but it's way too big to draw the whole thing. And so Leo introduces her to uh, cartography and starts talking about, uh, you know, looking at elevations and, and water routes and stuff like that. And so she learns to draw nature. And that that's kind of a fun fun part of it. And she becomes a leader in this group, even though she is by far the quietest of, of all of the kids. She becomes the leader, and um, she also becomes very, um, she, I don't know if we say falls in love, but at least gets a crush on the character of Jay, and it's and he uh, has a crush on her. And so we see a relationship start to build between them, an innocent relationship, um, but they, they start to build a relationship, and then you start to see the, the funny stuff that happens to the other kids because some of them are, um, they think they're athletic, but yet they struggle when they're out in the woods, and and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And so this this book has several different themes running through it. And one of the I think one of the main purposes of the book was to bring the issue of environmentalism, you, you know, to the public, to young readers. And so one of the big um, themes that runs through it is environmentalism, protecting our environment and, and uh, protecting nature, especially our forests, which is very timely with all the forest fires that we've got going on. And, uh, you know, it runs, it, the the book is, is really good with current events right now. Um, we also see a theme of, um, you, you know, just money issues, poverty versus uh, privilege. And uh, it talks about, you know, these kids, they've never even been out of the city for the most part. And, um, and it's all about they, they don't have enough money. And the people that do get to go to, you know, state parks and, and nat nat national parks are people with privilege. And so it hits that um, topic. And I thought they did a really good job of hitting both of, both of these topics. It talks about forest fires. Um, it talks a lot about uh, the need for building trust which is something that um, anybody who has worked with young kids, you've, uh, if you're going to be able to teach them or be able to, you know, show them, show them anything, you've, you've got to build that trust back and forth. And of course, with her major losses in life, uh, Addie's got to find trust. Um, and it also deals with, you know, loss of parents and just the healing process and what that takes and how disturbing that can be. Um, you know, throughout the book, it talks about Addie having uh, b uh, bad dreams, night terrors, and a lot of them go back to that original fire. And um, I just, I feel bad for her. I feel bad for the character. And I thought they did a really good job of building her character. Um, 
I would like to have seen them build the other characters a little bit more. I could easily see a spin-off book from this. That would be uh, maybe something I'd like to see in the future. Um, but throughout the story, as I said, they go on these long hikes and everything. And of course, as they're going, they're talking about nature. They're talking about the importance of the forests and how people just don't get why they're important. And then um, it starts talking about how it's just a giant tinderbox because of uh, global warming. And they don't, they don't beat the reader over the head with global warming. Don't, I mean, I don't want you to think that. But it definitely puts, uh, puts into the reader's head the impact that we as humans have on our environment. And it does it in a subtle way that I think is very, very effective. And anyway, it gets back to the forest being a tinderbox. And you can you can guess it. The kids go out on a hike and they get caught in a giant forest fire. And uh, I don't want to tell you anything more because uh, I don't want to ruin the book. But it is an exciting adventure of, uh, you know, watching kids during going through that growing up process, dealing with uh, the world's uh, problems that we are having and that, you know, the problems that are only going to get worse as we go. And um, so anyway, I would highly recommend this book. As I said, it's a middle grade book, but any any older reader could, could uh, tackle this. It's 247 pages, but it's got a little bit bigger font, as you can see, and a lot of its dialogue, it, it uh, moves along really, really fast. And so if you work with middle, middle grade people or young readers, or if you just like to read young adult, young reader stuff, try this book out, Paradise on Fire. It's a new one out, again, by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Highly recommended. I thought it was very well done, um, very, uh, very tastefully done. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm really glad that the Howard Zinn education program. I can't remember the exact name. I apologize for that, but uh, I'm really glad they sent it to me because I probably would not have come across my radar otherwise, but it's going to be a real good addition to my classroom library. So anyway, BookTube, this, is, this has been uh, a book chat on Paradise on Fire. I hope you go check this out. Uh, thank you for watching and happy reading.